I'm Stacy, and today is December 29th, 2022, and I figured if we were doing some live feeds, today might be a really great day to show you the end of the year sewing machine clean out. Um, December is usually a pretty busy time for me. I've got a lot of individual projects and clients and Christmas gifts and everything. I normally clean out my sewing machine every week, um, but sometimes I get busy and just like everybody else, sometimes those cleaning tasks fall to the back of the list. And um, today I want to show you what my real life sewing machine that I use every day for all of my professional sewing looks like after almost three and a half weeks of sewing and what a cotton thread can really do to the inside of your machine and why you do need to clean it regularly, especially if you're working pretty consistently on a project. Um, I'm going to warn you that this might be pretty gross uh, in terms of what we might see inside, but hopefully by the end of it, it'll be very satisfying. So let's dive right in. So some tools I have with me today are my Swiffer cloth, a pair of tweezers, the brush that my machine came with, as well as the, um, the key to unscrew my screw plate. Uh, I actually like to put this tiny little magnet on here to help hold on to my screws. But first, we're going to start by unthreading our machine and kind of giving it a general dusting on the outside here. Most people don't quite realize how much dust a common cotton thread can uh, produce, but it really can, um, especially with your when you're sewing with it every single day, like me. I like using cotton thread for most of my projects. It's strong, it's durable, it's washable. It does have a little bit of stretch and give to it. Overall, it's it's pretty much my my go-to thread of choice unless I'm really working on a specialty project um, I'm even going to take out my needle here it's been a while since I changed it anyway so take that out swiping down the post So one of the main reasons why I started doing this, because a lot of times most of you are probably just recreationally sewing. Um, even when I was still just recreationally sewing, one time I had a problem with my bobbin. It gave me like my my needle went down and it hung up and I couldn't get it and like you know you got your project in here and you're trying to like get it out and I could get it out just enough that I could clip it off pull the project out unthread the machine go to pull the bobbin out to re-thread the machine um, and I saw that there was some little extra threads okay great pulled those out and I went to sew and I still could not get my thread really to, to move. My needle was kind of just like stuck. It was frozen. Um, I was freaking out because I, could, I couldn't figure out. Like I took everything apart, put it all back together. And um, lo and behold, what really happened <laughs> is that I really needed to get into the machine. There were more threads inside. And I'm going to lift this faceplate off and you'll truly see what I'm talking about. Again, forewarn, this is going to be massively gross. 
You ready? Main face plate. Whoa, mama. That is crazy. Let's see if I can zoom a little bit there. Wow, look at all of that. So yeah, I, I was really intensely surprised when I took that faceplate off, how much was in there. And um, again, for me, I sew multiple hours every day. This is a couple weeks worth of buildup for me. And it's quite crazy, actually. But this is, look at that. Look at that. Hey, Owen. Check that out. Look at, I just pulled that from, from right here. Just right here. This whole piece. Crazy. And this is why we clean out our my machines. I am feeling a little guilty that I haven't done this sooner, but better than not doing it at all. As you can see, like a lot of this is kind of just like a gray, you know, overtone here, but like even in here, you probably can see a little bit. There's some red in there. At one point, you know, I was working with red thread and fabric. And really, this is kind of no dr different than um, your dryer. I, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope <laughs> that um, you all clean out your lint trap on your dryers. If you don't, this is your reminder to do it today. Please clean out the lint trap on your dryer. Um, it is actually for your dryer. Look at this. It's quite dangerous if you don't clean out your lint trap. But look at this, look at. It all has compacted in there pretty heavily. And you'll notice too that I've, um, I started with tweezers to pull a lot of this big stuff out. Um, I know some people like to use canned air. I don't, um, unless I really, really, really have to. I don't like blowing uh, any sort of moisture into my machines because um, it's a machine and because it is such uh, an intricate like maze of metal work in here. Um, you, know, you don't want to get moisture into anything that can't be properly dried out because machines rust. Look at like even here in between your feed dogs. Isn't that crazy? It compacts right down in between these little treads. Almost like little teeny tiny like dollhouse erasers. It's nuts how much you'll that we'll pull out of here. And at the end, I'll give you, I'll show you, um, I got a collection going and I'll show you how much truly comes out. This is just getting literally the surface. All kinds of little crevices in here. And this is kind of a, it's a bit of a process. Pull a bunch out, brush it down, collect what you can off of this brush. And 
then start pulling more out and you'll get more of this kind of side residue accumulating. Hey, Owen. So yeah, so the, if you, uh, I really love my Singer Heavy Duty, um, particularly this this model. Uh, I love that it's an analog instead of a digital. There, there's nothing wrong with having a digital machine. I'm just pretty old fashioned um, in the fact that I really like that. This is it. There aren't a ton of like crazy flashy bells and whistles to this. It is very straightforward um, and very easy to use. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I don't know what your first project is going to be, but um, hopefully you should really be able to just open the box and go. If you need help threading your machine, I do have a couple of videos on threading. Um, and I do see here, you know, you're asking how, how often do I clean it? Um, I, as a professional seamstress, I usually, because I sew every single day for several hours, I usually clean my machine once a week. And like I said, I'm feeling a little guilty that I haven't given her some love in a couple weeks here because of the Christmas rush. But um but yeah. If you're do if you're like an occasional sewer, you probably don't have to do it as often as I do. But um say maybe you're making a quilt and you do a really big quilt project or something. Uh, maybe after your project is done, you should pop it open and give it a, a good brush out. See, look at all that. All that, that big old guy was hidden down inside here. And um, for those that don't know, these are, your, these are your feed dogs. They help push against your presser foot to push your project through the machine. This is your bobbin housing and here it is plastic. Um, with a couple metal pieces in here. Also, please make sure uh, if you're not comfortable, like I have, my machine is plugged in and turned on so that I can use my light here, but I do also have some external lighting. Um, please, please, please make sure you're careful. You know, I, I've been doing this a long time, so I'm very, I'm comfortable leaving my machine on, but if you are not, you know, unplug it, set up some external lighting to help you see. Cause there is a, like, there are a lot of little crevices and things in here to get all of this stuff out of. So. I'm never very lucky with being able to pull this bobbin housing out on my own. I'm always afraid that I'm gonna um, break it, <laughs> honestly. So, um, I am going to take this little arm off. again I uh, I put this tiny little magnet on here to help me not lose any of these pieces if I do take this apart Apologize for the arm. Sometimes it's difficult to get in here and I'm really trying to make sure that I don't lose this screw. I'll try and show you what I'm doing without being too much in the way.
really what I'm trying to do is get this front screw out. As you can see here, this is, it's a little, it's just a tiny little thing. That's why I have that magnet just in case. And then hopefully that back one is loose enough that I can get in here. Again, I apologize for the arm. Just try and make sure I don't lose pieces here. Because sometimes to get this bobbin housing out, um, I need to loosen it up. Like I said, see, this is your bobbin housing. It has the, the metal bottom and the thread catch. Uh, this is all plastic. This is a really good place to use your brush to clean all this junk and build up off. Break it up. There's even some stuff down in that bottom there. And uh, get it all shined up. Again, like you're gonna create kind of a mess as you go, so don't be <laughs> don't be mad at yourself if you're like I just cleaned it and now I gotta clean it again yeah it's that's kind of part of the process here is that you're gonna clean a layer and clean a layer and clean a layer see look at it. all that just came out of the bottom I told you she was pretty dirty so <laughs> did warn you in advance but again I am sewing every single day multiple hours a day um, just trying to get in around this screw here because yes there's even some buildup and all of this buildup can affect how well your machine runs so you know, it's worth taking the time to really, if you're going to take it apart, you know, really get in there and get all that junk out. Oh, and that's awesome that you make hats. I actually was going to do... Um, a live feed pretty soon um, about hats. I am in Buffalo and for those of you that don't know, um, see look at that, that's under the bobbin housing. Uh, that don't know, we just uh, suffered a pretty heavy historical snowstorm, a blizzard over the weekend. Um, pretty severe, pretty dangerous situation. Luckily, my family, uh, we were all okay, which is, is nice to say. Um, I know not everybody was as fortunate as we were, and, you know, our hearts go out to them. And, you know, doing anything we can to, to help friends, neighbors, family get them back on their feet after the snowstorm. Uh, but one of the things I was going to do was show you guys how you could quickly and easily make a winter hat to help get through these really, really cold days. And of course, um, I was gonna do that and then I said, you know, I really need to clean my machine first before I get into all of that. So that's what we're doing today before we get into any more projects. I don't know if you can see, there's like this ledge under here that I've been trying to get to. I'm still pulling out these massive chunks of dusty grime in here. Like, they're just, it's, this whole machine is like, 
has all these little hiding places underneath that you, you really wouldn't even think about unless you've <laughs> unless you've done this before or you lost something down inside. But that the reason why I started cleaning my machine was because that that bobbin thread that went all haywire and froze up my machine, it was stuck in here underneath the bobbin housing and that's why nothing would work. It got all caught up in here and just it wouldn't go. See, and, and now even though there's no bobbin in there or anything, I can very slowly give this a turn because there's there's holes in the side here that will, if we move it a little bit, will allow us to access the sides or deeper down than what we, we were able to access in its original position. right there some more and this is all just tweezers so far I haven't even brushed anything out with the brush just going in and trying to grab and get a lot of that junk out and see and now right there that is all the way at the bottom so like that's how much space there is from here to the to the bottom. A lot of people don't realize that there truly is a ton of space for all of this buildup to happen. See like right here in the front. This one hasn't compacted together. So that's why it's pulling out in like these fluffy pieces and all of this too like they're part of it doesn't just like affect your machine just like sewing part of the reason you really do want to get in there and pull all this stuff out is because it's a sponge for oil and that's why a lot of this does like look just like dirty machine <laughs> innards um you know a lot of times um modern machines they tell you that you don't need to oil it because it should come with enough oil to last a lifetime well let me tell you not if you sew as much as I do um, I do oil my machine and I'll sh I can I have a video on that on my channel if you want to see it but um, I might do that today as well I, I check the oil on it But uh, all of this thread buildup acts as like a sponge and it's taking the oil away from the parts of the machine that truly need it. Oh, and see, I just took, I was gonna start doing my brush. The reason why you brush too is that these bristles will help bring more stuff up. There's a piece in there, but there we go. I want to get to. Oh yeah, and I'm sorry, for those of you that don't know or have never realized, this brush that comes with your machine, which is awesome, it's the perfect little brush to get in there. There's a seam ripper in the end of your of the brush. What? Crazy, right? So they do they gave you that tiny little seam ripper. First time I discovered that, I like freaked out. I thought that was so cool. And then of course, I was telling somebody about it and they were like, "Uh, yeah." <laughs> they weren't that impressed. I was like, "Well, I So if you're ever in a pinch and need a seam ripper and you have your brush, there's one in there. Let's 
Now this is where you truly want to use this brush and you take your time to really clear this junk out so that it's not just like sucking up all the oil from your housing, your bobbin housing. The oil wick is right here in the middle. Um, so that's where a lot of the oil for your machine comes from. Um, the tweezers did not come with the machine. These are tweezers that I bought to keep with my machine. Uh, tweezers are very, very helpful for a number of reasons. Uh, so I like to keep a pair handy in my, in my kit, right here in this front accessories box. Again, moving this bobbin housing around allows you access to, to more of this circle and beyond. This center part is what can be kind of tedious and annoying, um, but it's worth it to do. And see, this is your oil wick here in the middle. You know, it's not terribly long. It's only about an inch. Um, you can see it's actually mostly white, so I, I should throw some oil in my machine. But that, if you pull this out when you're cleaning, put it back. Your machine needs that. It wants that. <laughs> it's its little straw, you know. your machine's thirsty. So yeah. One time I, uh, I was working a movie and <laughs> we were set up and we were, I was working in the, in the costume shop it's one of the tailors for the film and you know when they that particularly particular week they were filming these scenes where the extras were uh they were getting dirty like they were outside they were kind of in the mud and the dirt and you know not like splashing and rolling around in the in the dirt and stuff but just walking through it um there were horses so like I can tell you that it's a period film that I was working on so there's horses and stuff in there it, you know it's not a paved city street it's still dirt and um I remember a lot of people coming back and some people needed some repairs done on their costumes before the next day and their costumes were filthy from all this mud and dirt and I was expected to fix them all oh and by the way when when you know when you work a film and you're in the costume shop and stuff like that not every movie uh, provides you uh, you know like a machine to work on or anything sometimes you have to bring your own it's called a kit um, you bring all your stuff with you. It's a pretty commonplace thing. But, you know, these costumes came back and they were absolutely filthy. And for continuity, which means, um, you know, movies shoot more than one day, obviously. And so a lot of these people have to come back multiple days a week to finish filming whatever scene they're working on or whatever. And uh, so I we can't clean their costumes. 
they have to stay the way that they are for continuity's sake. So I have to take these costumes that need repairs and <laughs> put them through my machine while they are absolutely filthy. My personal machine from my kit, and I was so upset because this whole, like as much lint as I pulled out today, my whole machine was just absolutely full of dirt and mud and grime. Um, and I know a lot of you would be like, well, why do you have to fix it if you need continuity? Well, I'm talking like, there's a couple kids who fell down and they, they ripped their pants open. So they still need to wear the pants and we gotta and we gotta fix those up so that they can wear them without being split up the back or something. Um, but it, it it was just you open I opened this up at the end of the day and it was just at, it was gross. It was so bad to the point of um, I actually wound up getting a whole brand new machine because it was so dirty and I was afraid that uh, it just wasn't gonna do it for me anymore. So, so that was the lesson I learned that day in the importance of truly maintaining your machine, keeping it clean, keep, keeping it oiled, and taking care of it so that it lasts a long time. Because, like, you know, some people might be like, oh, that machine's just a couple hundred dollars. You could easily replace it. It's like, yes, but, you know, a couple hundred dollars in today's day and age is not going as far as it used to. So I want to keep this, I like this machine. I want to keep it going as long as I possibly can. Um, I like it a lot. So I'm going to take care of it. And I use it a lot. I, I need it. I need it for my livelihood. So um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I have a machine, but I like never use it. Or I have a brand new machine. I took it out of the box and nothing would work. Well, you know, part of the reason why machines don't work for people, even if they're like brand new, is because They've, they've never opened it. They've never run it. And much like a car, like if you have a classic car, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you have to turn it on every so often, run it, move it, make sure that the engine doesn't seize. The same thing goes for a sewing machine. It's, it's really no different. It's a small, it's a small machine, you know, it's not a car, but got to take care of it. So even if you're not using it, like that might be why it's seizing up is because you're not using it. <laughs> but yeah, that, that movie that I worked on with that experience really um, opened my eyes to how much of this you can get pretty, pretty filthy. Uh, I wound up even on that one very carefully and with the help of somebody else, flipping my machine upside down and pouring a whole bunch of dirt and sediment out of the machine. So that was quite the experience. And ultimately, even though I said I replaced that machine, I do still ultimately have that machine. Um, I've cleaned it up as much as I can, and I do occasionally use it, but uh, the, it is not my everyday machine anymore. I this is the this is the replacement. And as you can see, I, I have my Swiffer cloth here, just very gently getting any of those last little tiny surface bits. Ooh, make sure we don't lose this arm; otherwise, that would be absolutely horrible. Doing my best here to just very gently wipe all of this down. 
And I know some people said um, on my other cleaning video, like, oh, you should start with, you know, your needle bar and the return up top. If you wanted to start there, that's great. Um, I'll show you why I always like, I just, I start at the bottom and then I'll work my way up. Um, a lot of times people are like, oh, well, you know, if anything falls down, well, <laughs> if anything falls down, I'm going to have this covering. My Swiffer cloth will be covering my bobbin housing. Um, and then if you forget which way this goes in, like if you're trying to put it in, it's like, oh, it's not going in. The thread catch in this orange dot faces you. It go, it faces you, goes towards the front. And um, you'll be able to feel this. It sets in quite nicely on its own. Again, sorry for the arm. Just trying to make sure we don't lose anything. There we go. See, and it, it has a little bit of leeway. Oh, I forgot, I should have. That's okay, because I can take that out right now. Um, I am gonna put a little bit of oil into my oil wick. Um, I know some people are, they have their own whatever oil they wanna use, but there's nothing wrong if you, whether you have a singer or not, um, this Singer all-purpose machine oil is perfectly defined to use in any sewing machine. Um, this looks like quite a big bottle. It's four ounces. Um, this will last you a very long time. Be very careful. You don't really need a ton. I only do literally just a couple drops. Two or three drops will do it. You don't want to over oil your machine. Um, especially since most of you are probably recreationally sewing. Um, if you put too much oil in, your machine will, will be over lubricated and then it'll be looking for all of that cotton thread um, over pull or over spray, whatever you want to call all the little bits of the cotton thread that fall off while you're sewing, all that stuff I just pulled out, your machine will be looking for it because um, it's too wet, you know, kind of like a, like a person, you know, it just needs to be properly hydrated. So that sits in, that little bit of wiggle room. Some people can are very good at pulling this out without having to loosen any of this. I'm not, I'm not confident that I'm not gonna break it. I'm always really scared of that, which probably sounds dumb since I do this all the time, but I am, I get nervous. So it's just easier for me to loosen up those screws, put this back in, I do this little dance with it every time I put it back in to make sure it's not too tight because um, your thread comes through here in this guide and then actually goes right between this plastic and this metal and then comes up through the top. So you don't want it to be too tight when you put it back on. And what the worst case scenario, it is too tight. So open this back up, loosen the screws a little bit, and adjust. It's not a huge deal. You may not get it right the first time, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, that comes with owning your machine and learning how it works and properly maintaining it. So no harm done if you need to adjust it. Okay, so I just threw my key down the inside of my machine here on accident. 
That's okay though because it'll come through the bottom and I'll have to find that in a little bit. But essentially what you're going to wind up doing here is you'll put all your screws back in and then you'll have to put your, make sure your carriage return is all the way up. Put your face plate back in the correct direction and then everything all lines back up here. Just like that. Then you'll want to put your presser foot back on. And then I'm actually eventually going to put a new needle back in here. But beyond that, all you really want to do is kind of make sure your whole machine is kind of dusted down. A lot of the the insets and the wheels will accumulate a lot of this thread dust as well. So make sure to give it some love, especially the top here, because when you're winding bobbins, all of that thread overspray happens up here as well. And I'm not going to show it right now, but if you want to get real crazy, you can open up this screw right here and this housing comes completely off the end and you can look at your needle bar and your uptake um, and oil in here as well. That one is very, um, that one is, I usually do it around the same time as I clean the under, but I don't oil it every single time. So then ultimately... This is what I took out of my machine, out of the bottom here where the bobbin sits. And that is a few weeks worth of thread junk, if you will. So this is why we definitely need to clean our machines, oil them, keep them happy, and yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. I thought that was pretty satisfying. It's all nice and clean now, and hopefully you found it interesting. So I hope you are safe, warm, happy, healthy, and you have a great, happy new year going into 2023. Keep sewing. I'm Stacy, and I'll see you between the scenes.